Hello, hello! Here is the video going over the 5.0 through 5.5 quiz review. This review goes over how to graph quadratics as well as how to write equations for quadratic functions. So the first thing we're looking at is vertex form. So vertex form is right in the middle, right there. So y equals a x minus h squared plus k, where your vertex is h and k. So part of the reason why it's called vertex form is because you can get the vertex just by looking at the equation. So if I look at number one, I have y equals x plus two squared minus five. Well, your h comes from the number in the parentheses with your x, and your k comes from the number that you're adding or subtracting on the outside of your parentheses. Now, when I'm pulling out my vertex from my equation, what I'm going to do is the number in the parentheses with the x, I'm going to take the opposite of, and my k is going to stay the same. The reason why I'm doing the opposite is because of right here in the equation where it says x minus h. So when I do x minus negative 2, that is going to give me the x plus 2 that you originally see. Now, your table has a bolded box right in the middle, and that is for the coordinates of your vertex. So I'm going to put negative 2 here and negative 5. I can go ahead and plot my vertex at negative 2, negative 5. And I can also graph the um, axis of symmetry, which is going to be a vertical dotted line through my vertex. Okay. Now to find other points to actually graph the parabola, we need to fill out the rest of the table. So make sure for your x values you are going in numerical order. So negative 1 and 0, and then on the other side, negative 3 and negative 4. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of those values and I'm going to plug them into my equation for the parabola. So I'm actually going to do these two negative 1 and a 0, and I'm going to show my work on the bottom. So I have y equals negative 1 plus 2 squared minus 5. And I just need to calculate what that is. So that's negative 1 plus 2 is 1 squared, which is also 1, minus 5 is negative 4. So that's going to make this part of my table negative 4. And I'm also going to plug in 0. So I have 0 plus 2 squared minus 5. So 0 plus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. The nice thing about parabolas is that they are symmetrical. So what that means is, is some of your table values are going to match with others. So at negative 3, your y value is also going to be negative 4. And at negative 4, your y value is also going to be negative 1. So these two will always match. And these two should always match. So let's go ahead and plot those points. So I had negative 1, negative 4 and 0, negative 1. On the other side, I had negative 3, negative 4, and negative 4, negative 1. And I can go ahead and connect, and then you've got your lovely U-shaped parabola. Now, if I look at my graph, I can see that it is concave up, because it is opening up, my vertex is a minimum. The transformations um, are the movements that your graph has made from the original x squared function. So normally your x squared function starts at 0, 0, but this one your vertex is at negative 2, negative 5. So my transformations mean I'm going to go to the left 2 and down 5. So essentially, you need to ask yourself, how do I plot my vertex? That's going to be where your transformations are. Equation for the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals, and in this case, it is negative 2. 
it should always match your x coordinate of your vertex. All right, number two. Same thing, I'm going to start by finding my vertex. For my x coordinate, I'm going to take the opposite of what's in the parentheses. Y coordinate is going to stay the same. I can go ahead and plot my vertex at 3, 7. I can draw my axis of symmetry, which is the vertical dotted line, right through that point, and you can see that it crosses your x-axis at 3. I'm going to go ahead and write down my equation for the axis of symmetry, since we just graphed it, x equals 3. And I need to fill out my table so I can have other points so I can see what is happening to this graph. So in numerical order, I have 4, 5, um, and then before 3, I have 2 and 1. And I'm going to pick either of those values to plug in to find my other points. I'm going to go with the top two this time, just for a little bit of variety. So I have y equals negative 1, x, but of course instead of x, I'm going to plug in 2, minus 3, squared, plus 7. Now be careful as you are calculating this because uh, you do have this negative 1 in the front. So let's take it piece by piece. Whoops. Didn't realize I had the eraser on. So I have y equals negative 1. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 squared plus 7. And then order of operations tells me to do the exponent first. So that leaves me with negative 1 times negative 1 squared is a positive 1 plus 7, and negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, plus 7 is going to give us 6. So that was when I plugged in 2. And of course, since our parabola is symmetrical, this is going to match with my x-coordinate of 4. It's going to give me the same value. And let's go ahead and plug in 1. So I have y equals negative 1 times 1 minus 3 squared plus 7. Negative 1 times negative 2 squared plus 7. That's going to give me negative 1 times negative 2 squared is 4 plus 7. Negative 1 times 4 is negative 4 plus 7 is going to equal 3. So I have 3 when I plug in 1, which also means I'm going to have the y value of 3 when I plug in 5, because your parabola is symmetrical. All right, let's go ahead and plot those points. So 1, I was at 3, 2, I am at 6. And of course, I'm going to have the other points on the other side, because it is symmetrical. And there is my lovely parabola. I can see from my graph that it is opening down. And because it is opening down, I have a maximum. My transformations, so thinking about how I get to my vertex, I go to the right, oops, to the right three and up seven. And there is actually another transformation that happened with this one, and it is going to be a reflection. Normally, your parabola is open up, but this one is opening down, which means it reflected over the x-axis. You'll also know that it's opening down because if I look at my original equation, I have a negative in front of my parentheses. All right, one more. So again, I'm going to start by finding my vertex. I'm going to take the opposite. So that's negative 4, positive 1. I'm going to go ahead and plot my vertex, negative 4, 1. I can graph my axis of symmetry through my vertex. And the equation for my axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 4, since it always matches the x-coordinate of your vertex. Okay, let's find other values to fill in the table. Again, make sure it is in numerical order. 
and I'm going to pick two values to plug in. I'm gonna go with the bottom two. So I'm gonna start by plugging in negative three. So I have y equals three times negative three uh, plus four squared uh, plus one. That gives me three, negative three plus four is one, squared plus one. Order of operations tells me to do the exponent first, so one squared is one. Three times one plus one is four. So my value when I plugged in negative three is four. And let's also plug in negative two. Now you're more than welcome to use a calculator to actually evaluate these expressions. Uh, you don't necessarily have to work through it piece by piece. Just be careful with your, what, what you're plugging into the calculator. Um, negative 2 plus 4 is 2 squared plus 1. Let's see, so that's 3 times 4 plus 1 is 12 plus 1, which is 13. And, of course, our parabolas are symmetrical, so those values should match 4 and 13. So let's go ahead and plot. So let's see, negative 3, 4 on the other side as well. And negative 2, 13 is going to be somewhere up here. And negative 6, 13, also somewhere off the graph. And there is my parabola. I can see that it is opening up, which means my vertex is a minimum. And my transformations are to the left, 4, and up, 1. All right, number four, rank the following quadratics from the narrowest to the widest. Now, when you're comparing width of a parabola, what you are focusing on is you are focusing on A. So we want to compare A values. So if I look at letter A, my A is what's in front of the parentheses. So A in this case is negative one. A for letter B is 0 0.3. And A for letter C is going to be negative 4. Now I'm going to go ahead and temporarily ignore the negatives. The negatives are just going to tell me that my parabola is opening down. And what I'm doing is I'm going to put it in order from smallest to largest value of A. Because your largest value of A is going to have the... Oh, I said that wrong. <laughs> Sorry, I need to order it from the largest to the smallest value of A. So the narrowest is going to be the largest A. And the widest is going to be the smallest A. So in terms of my largest value of A, that's going to be 4. So that's letter C. Um, the next largest value is going to be A, which is negative 1, and B, which is 0.3. So again, I'm just kind of ignoring the negatives and just putting the numbers in numerical order from largest to smallest. So essentially, if your A is bigger than 1, that is going to create a graph that's more narrow. If your A is between negative 1 and 1, that is going to make it wider. All right. Number five, sketch a graph of a quadratic with the following characteristics. Concave up, which means this is going to be opening up. It has no x-intercepts, and the axis of symmetry is at x equals 4. So I'm going to go ahead and go to 4 on my x-axis vertical dotted line, because that's going to be my axis of symmetry. 
and it does tell me that I don't have any x-intercepts. So your vertex is always going to be somewhere on the axis of symmetry. And since I don't have any x-intercepts, that means it's not going to cross the x-axis at all. But I do know it is concave up, which means my parabola needs to be opening up. So there is a sketch that meets those stipulations. Let's look at letter B. 1x-intercept at negative 2, 0. y-intercept at 0, negative 3. Okay. Now, it doesn't really tell you which direction it is opening, but what I can do is I can connect these two points um, to create a parabola. I can go up in that direction, so I can have a parabola that opens up, so I use my y-intercept as my vertex, or I could use my x-intercept as my vertex, and I can actually go down. So you have some options for this particular graph since it doesn't tell you whether it's concave up or concave down. Okay, writing equations. So writing equations is a four-step process. Step number one is to identify your vertex. So I'm going to look at my graph. Here is my vertex. Ordered pair for that point is negative 1, 0. So vertex, negative 1, zero. My a value is something that I need to find, and in order to find my a value, I need to pick any other point on my graph. So I'm going to go with this point. Ordered pair for that point is zero, one, two, three, zero, three. Okay. Now in order to find a, you are going to use your vertex, which was negative one, zero, and the point, any point on your graph, which I picked as 0, 3. I'm going to go ahead and label my vertex HK, and my point is XY. And what you're going to do is you are going to replace all four of those numbers into our vertex form. And what's going to happen is every value is going to be replaced with a numerical value except for a, which is going to allow us to find a. So y was 3, x is 0, so again I'm just looking at where I labeled my points, so x, y, h, and k, minus h, so I'm subtracting negative 1 squared plus k, which is 0. Well, since I'm subtracting the negative, that's going to change that to a plus. And we're going to go ahead and start solving for a. So I have 3 equals order of operations, tells me to do the parentheses first. So that's 1 squared, which is 1, a plus 0. Um, I guess I could subtract 0 from both sides, and you get a equals 3. Okay. So, to write the equation, now that I have a, I'm going to use a, I'm going to go ahead and circle what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a, h, and k to write my equation. So my equation is going to be y equals a, which is 3, x minus h squared plus k. Now that 0, that plus 0 is totally optional, you do not need to write it. Um, but some people like to see all the values, so you can go ahead and put that 0 there. I did solve for a. a was 3, so I'm going to go ahead and put that there. Okay, now we need to verify. So I'm pretty confident that my equation is correct, but let's double check just in case I made a mistake somewhere. In order to verify, you need to use a different point that you have not used yet, which is this third point over here at negative 2, 3. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write down my point, negative 2, 3, and my point is always an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to plug in this point into my equation to make sure that my equation is correct. So where I see a y, I'm going to replace it with 3. Where I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a 2. And I hope it works out. So I'm going to simplify my right-hand side to see if it equals my left-hand side. I decided not to put the plus 0 there because it's kind of, um, you don't need it because plus 0 is just going to give you itself. 
negative one or negative two plus one is negative one squared. Negative one squared is positive one, which gives me three equals three. Got the same number on both sides, therefore our equation was correct. All right, let's do another one. Here is my vertex that is at four, one. So vertex, four, one. From here, I need to pick a point. I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite my vertex over here, which is my H and my K. And I need a point. I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. You can really use any point on your graph, um, but this point is at six, zero. So my point, six, zero. And my point is going to be X and Y. And I'm going to take those values and plug it into my vertex form, which I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite. Sometimes it is helpful to see that vertex form as you are working. That way you can see where your values are going to get plugged into. So my Y is zero, my X is six, my H is four, and my K is one. So I just took these values that I just circled and plugged them into the right spots. And we simplify. Six minus four is two plus one. Uh, two squared is four. I'm gonna write my four in front of my A because we are used to seeing the numbers in front of our variables instead of to the side when we're multiplying. I'm gonna subtract one from both sides and I get A equals negative one-fourth. To write my equation, I'm going to replace my A, my H, and K, so X minus four squared plus one. I do still need to verify, so I'm gonna pick any other point. Um, I'm gonna do this one. Why not? That point is at, what is that, two zero? And I'm going to plug it in. So my point, two zero. That's my X and my Y, and I want to plug it into my equation to see if my equation um, is correct. So my Y is zero, negative one fourth, two minus four squared, plus one. That gives me negative one fourth, two minus four is negative two squared plus one. Order of operations tells us to work through the exponent. So I have negative one fourth, negative two squared is a positive four plus one. Negative one fourth times four is negative one plus one, which of course is zero. So our equation is correct. So that's how you write equations when you're given a graph. Now let's look at what happens when you're given a table. So when you're given the graph, it's pretty easy to find the vertex. You can visually see it. It's at the top of the parabola or the bottom of the parabola. When you're given a table, what you are looking at is you are going to be looking at your y values. So I'm gonna look at my y values and what I'm looking for is I am looking for a y value that is sandwiched between the same numbers. So if I look at my y values, I have seven, five and a half, five, five and a half, and seven. So I can see right here at this five that it is sandwiched between 5.5 and 5.5. That right there is your vertex. Because if you look back at your graphs um, for, let's look at this one, for letter B, if you'll notice these y values, are exactly the same. Same thing when we go back to our tables, you can see that our y values ended up being the same. So our vertex was sandwiched in between the same values. So that's what you're looking for um, when you're trying to identify the vertex. So my vertex for letter A is at two and five. And I do still need to find my A, so I'm gonna go ahead and list my vertex over here. At this point, you're doing the same exact thing. 
that you did with the previous problem. So now I'm going to pick any point on my table, and that's going to be my point. So this was 0, 7. I like to pick points that have a 0 in it just because usually it's easier to solve that way. Um, but again, I'm going to take that and plug it into my vertex form. So y equals a x minus h squared plus k. My y is 7. I don't know my a. My x is 0. My h is 2. And my k is 5. Continue to solve. 0 minus 2 is negative 2 squared plus 5. Negative 2 squared is 4. So I have 4a plus 5. Subtract 5 from both sides. That gives me 2 equals 4a. Divide both sides by 4. And that gives me 2 fourths, which I can reduce to 1 half. So my a value is 1 half. And again, to write my equation, I'm going to replace my a with my h and my k. So essentially your a with your vertex is what goes back into the equation. And of course, we must verify. I'm going to go ahead and use this point down here. So the point I'm using to verify is 4, 7. That is my x and my y. But now I'm going to plug it into this equation because I want to make sure that it is correct. So I have 7 equals 1 half. 4 minus 2 squared plus 5. Order of operations, parentheses first. 2 squared is 4. Whoops. 1 half of 4 is 2. And of course, 2 plus 5 is 7. All right, last one. So again, I am looking at my y values. I want to find a y value that is sandwiched between the same value. So if I look at my table, I have 2, negative 1, 2. I can see that my negative 1 is sandwiched in between 2 and 2. So there's my vertex, negative 6, negative 1. So vertex, negative 6, negative 1. Got to pick another point. I'm going to go with negative 5, 2. This one didn't have any zeros. That's too bad. Vertex is hk. Point is xy. y equals ax minus h squared plus k. I chose to skip rewriting the vertex form um, since this is our fourth time doing it. And of course, since I'm subtracting that negative, let's change that to a plus order of operations. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Add 1 to both sides and you get a equals 3. Wonderful. I'm going to take my a, my h, and my k and write it in my equation. And let's verify. Let's see. Oh, I mixed up my colors. My verification was supposed to be in green. Oh boy, let's go with pink. I'm gonna use this bottom point to verify. So what is that? Negative 326. Oh, I hope this works out. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna plug in 26 for Y. So this is my X and my Y. So I have 26 equals three times negative three plus six squared minus one. Order of operations, parentheses, so negative three plus six is three minus one. Three squared is nine. Nine times three is 27, whew, worked out. I was getting a little worried there for a second that I made a mistake because I did not want to do this problem over. <laughs> All right. 
So that concludes all of the problems for your quiz review. If you are still confused, I highly recommend that you go back and re-watch some of those problems that you are confused on to get further clarification. All right, good luck on your quiz.